and ever since now ratha yatra is there pretty much uh, across the world all the major cities we see ratha yatra before 1967 people very few people know about lord jagannath and it was only within oriya in the state of orissa that's what people know about otherwise even in south india we never used to hear about lord jagannath but now um, it is kind of household name jagannath ratha yatra even now when we say jagannath immediately they say oh, puri jagannath so at the puri the name place name is already just attached to him like puri jagannath people call it puri jagannath <coughs> so now by the mercy of sri la prabha jagannath is not just limited to puri or orissa but it is there around the world so we are very very grateful to sri la prabha for bringing this mercy to each and every one of us um the glories of jagannath puri is mentioned in many puranas which mentioned in lot of puranas especially it was profusely mentioned in purushottama matya in skanda purana so it begins with the <clears throat> assembly of sages in forest in a forest discussing the spiritual topics and the assembly was led by jaimini rishi so jaimini rishi was discussing many spiritual topics and he mentioned during the discussion he specifically mentioned about a holy place in the middle of these three planetary systems right there are three planetary systems upper lower and middle there are 14 planetary systems in this material world in each and every universe there are 14 material planetary systems so jain rishi mentions about one particular place called purushottama kshetra he mentions about the kshetra in the middle planetary system then all the sages wanted to inquire more about it they wanted to learn more about this particular kshetra so jain rishi started narrating this past time about lord uh, jagannath so it starts with the creation um most of you know how this universe is created how universes are created this material world is created so karnadaka shay vishnu also known as mahavishnu is lying in the ashram ocean and from the pores of his body for each breath for inhale and exhale millions and billions of universes are generated from his pores of the body they are coming out and by his glance upon the prakriti material nature all these living entities are generated they come out right they are in the dormant stage they, they get manifested by the glance of mahavishnu then once this universes are generated each and every universe mahavishnu expands himself as garbhodaksha vishnu and he is the super soul of every universe that's why all the universes are floating in the air from the garbhodaksha vishnu the next expansion is shridaksha vishnu he is the paramatma in each and every living entity right and the first living entity created in each and every universe is lord brahma so after lord brahma was created who is also known as a secondary creator for material universe so he looked at entire universe and it's completely dark and he started doing the secondary creation and at some point by knowing the nature of the material world he feels depressed in this material world why because material world is known as dukkha and shashwata so which is place of misery and also temporary so what kind of miseries are there in this material world are there any miseries first of all lot of times we see people very very happy they don't understand what is the meaning of misery out of ignorance right but they think this is a place of happiness i don't feel any misery so what kind of miseries we are talking about do you think material world is this world is a place of misery or always happiness is there uh, yes yeah, sometimes we can say sometimes there is misery yeah. what kind of physical disability <laughs> sorry for picking you on because <laughs> but i know you can answer this question that's why i was asking uh, so the most important thing is that it's temporary yes this is the thing that means it's not long lasting this is the thing that sub, that uh, that adds on to uh, the suffering Mm, because it is temporary and we feel suffering because nothing is permanent we yeah. hold on to some attachments but they are not no longer there they are not there with us for all the time so we feel yeah. some kind of a suffering yeah. right okay any other sufferings anyone can think of in this meeting yes amit there are three kinds of sufferings okay adhyatmic klesha adhyatmic klesha and adhyatmic klesha okay what are this so some uh, some miseries which are caused if you from the natural calamities so those are adhyatmic 
then uh, other thing like our, our mind creates misery for us. For example, uh, like we long for permanence, but there is no permanence in the material world. Mm. So what happens is we are not satisfied with anything. Right. So that is what we have to make. And um, yeah. Hmm. So basically there are three types of uh, three types of pleasures one experience in this material world. Like Amit Prabhu was telling, um Adhyatmik, Adi Bhautik, Adi Daivik. Adhyatmik is the problems or the miseries one experience because of their own mind and body. These are the sufferings caused by one's own mind and body. Birth, death, old age, disease. This is you know everybody has to go through these four sufferings. So, and the distress caused by the mind. So this is called Adhyatmic sufferings, or pleasures. Then the next one is Adi Bhautik. Adi Bhautik is the miseries caused by other living entities. So we all have experienced in the last two, three years what has been going on just because of one bacteria, entire world is suffering, right? So that is Adi Bhautik suffering. Um, then Adi Daivik. Adi Daivik is basically the natural calamities. The sufferings caused by the nature, material nature of the Prakriti. So these are the three types of pleasures everybody has to experience in this material world. So by seeing this place, Lord Brahma was completely depressed. You know, what am I doing here in this material world? Why am I even doing this creation, uh, which is a place of you know, miseries? Then he prayed Lord Vishnu. Then uh, he asked Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu appeared and he asked Lord Vishnu, is there any place on this material world where one can get deliverance from all the sinful activities? Is there any pure place in this material world where one can take shelter of? Then Lord Vishnu smiles and says, Yes, there is one place where I receive, reside, and that place is called Purushottama Kshetra. Now he mentions that um, he gives the direction uh, where the place is exactly, and it is about 80 miles um, diameter, and he mentions that it is in a Nilachal uh, mountain. That's what it says. Immediately, Lord Brahma. You know, picks up his uh, GPS and puts the coordinates of the place you know, and starts going to going towards that uh, place called Nilachara Kshetra. So after going to the uh, Purushottama Kshetra, Nilachara mountain, um, there is a deity called Nila Madhava, blue sapphire deity. You know, along with his consort, Lakshmi Devi. Right. So he goes and pays obeisances to um, Lord Vishnu in the form of Nila Madhava and Lakshmi Devi. And then, in the place, right, right in the place, there is a banyan tree. Under the tree, there is a kund, or there is a lake called Rohini Kund. So he observes a rare phenomenon in the place. So while he was looking at the kund, one crow, which is a very, very simple crow, the crow just comes into, dives into the water, and immediately it takes a form of four-armed Vishnu, the associate of Vishnu, and immediately goes back to the spiritual world in front of Brahma, then it gets very bewildered. Wow. A simple crow can get deliverance, uh, moksha from this place just by dipping in this water. This particular scene was observed by Yamaraj. Then immediately Yamaraj comes and looks at this place. And then he says, No, I, I, I was given a service to punish people who are committing sinful activities. But if everybody comes here, all sinful people come here and take deep in this water, they get liberation, they get moksha, then I will not have any service. So he's worried about his service, his job. He's worried about his job security media, right? You know. So then you know he, he prays to Lord, uh, Lord Vishnu and Lakshmi Devi. Then immediately Lakshmi Devi appears and tells both Lord Brahma and Yamaraj, my dear Brahma and Yamaraj, this is the place called Purushottama Kshetra. And in this place there is no influence of any demigod. There is no influence of any demigod in this particular place. Whoever comes to take darshan of Nira, Nira Madhava and myself and takes deep in this river, they will be liberated immediately of all the sins. And then she goes on narrating a story um, about a rishi called Markandeya Rishi. So Markandeya Rishi was a very, very powerful yogi. Uh, he was given benediction to have a long life. So what is long life for us? What is a long life? 70 years? 80 years? 100 years? If somebody is, somebody lives 100 years in America, they will be shown on TV for 20 seconds. <laughs> in some countries, they will be given some medal or honor, so they are there more than 100 years. So that is considered long life for us, right? 
But Mark and Dairy, she was given a prediction to live for seven kalpas. So what is kalpa? What is kalpa? So there are four yugas, right? Uh, Kali Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, Treta Yuga, Satya Yuga. The age of Kali Yuga is 432,000 years. We are in Kali Yuga. Okay. The age of Kali Yuga is 432,000 years and only 5,000 years passed. So we have another 427,000 years to end Kali Yuga. Okay. And the twice the size of Kali Yuga is Dwapara Yuga, which is 864,000 years. And three times the age of Kali Yuga is Treta Yuga. So you do the calculation, I don't know. <laughs> but four times, four times the age of Kali Yuga is Satya Yuga. The four Yugas combined, the age of four Yugas combined is called one Mahayuga. So such thousand Mahayugas, thousand Mahayugas is called one Kalpa or one day of Brahma. And Mark and Dairi, she was given the prediction to live for seven so now, <laughs> during the day of Brahma, Mark and Dairi, she was very happy because it's daytime, you know, everything is there, you know, all, all food in planetary systems are intact, so he can travel wherever he wants, he can eat whatever he wants, everything is available, right? But the night time of Brahma, it is called partial devastation or pralaya, annihilation. At that time, what happens, out of 14 planetary systems, 11 planetary systems are inundated with water. Completely water. Only top three planetary systems remain. So now it's completely dark. It's night time of Brahma. It's completely dark. The waves of the ocean, each wave of the ocean is like a tsunami. That's the power of each wave of you know, devastation, annihilation. So they were hitting Mark and Dairi left and right, bottom, top to center, you know, so he was really suffering. It's everywhere it is dark, no food to eat. So then he was he was swimming, he was going, you know, all around in the dark. Finally, finally he sees one island out of nowhere. A small island of nowhere. He feels very, very happy. He goes into the mountain. Then he sees one banyan tree. On the top of banyan tree, there is one personality, a small baby in a blue color. You know, pulled his hand in front of Martin Dairishi, stretched out his hand, pulled his toe, feet and put the toe in his mouth and started sucking. So by seeing the beauty of this baby, the bluish baby, Mark and Dairi gets mesmerized. He understands that he is none other than Vishnu. Why this small baby is sucking his toe? What is the reason why the small baby is, why Vishnu is sucking his toe? There are so many glories or pastimes glorifying the sweetness of the lotus feet of the Lord. We always say lotus feet of the Lord. So the Lord Vishnu was thinking, why devotees compare my feet with lotus? What is so special about this? Why is it so sweet? So he wanted to taste the nectar of his own thumb, the toe. That's why he was sucking. And then Mark and Dirish, he says, he laughs and says, you cannot understand the taste of your toe. Only devotees can understand your taste of the lotus feet. So you ask, you ask your devotees, how tasteful, how sweet your uh, lotus feet is. So then he pays obeisances um, to the small baby boy. And then, then one, one peculiar incident happens there. While Market Energy was paying obeisances to Vishnu, um, the small baby, then <coughs> small baby just inhales. And immediately the entire water, including Market Energy, goes into his body. So Market Energy sees all the 14 planetary systems inside the, inside the small baby. So everything is, you know, inside uh, Lord Vishnu. So he sees everything, and then with one exhale, it blows out. Then Mark and Dairishi comes out, right? And then uh, Vishnu gives a benediction to Mark and Dairishi. So this place is always going to be there, no matter what. So even there is a, uh, even the, at the time of annihilation, this place will be there. So you reside on this uh, on this island, and you can worship me, and you can meditate. So Mark and Dairishi um, resides there, and he meditates Lord Vishnu. So, and at the time, even Lord Shiva is interested in this personality Mark and Dairi Shri, by knowing the glories of Mark and Dairi Shri. So, he comes down with this concert to give darshan, to give benediction to Mark and Dairi Shri in the planet, in that, in that island. So, then Mark and Dairi Shri also gives um, some benedictions to, sorry, Lord Shiva also gives benedictions to Mark and Dairi Shri. 
and then the Markande Rishi establishes the deity of Lord Shiva in the same island um, and then worships him. So that particular place is called Markande Sarovar. It is there in uh, Puri, in that area. So, so basically Lakshmi Devi is uh, narrating this story to mention the glory of this particular place called Purushottam Kshetra, how powerful that place is. And even there is a time, even at the time of annihilation, this is the place which is still there. It does not get affected by the uh, annihilation. And she continues to glorify the Purushottam Kshetra. And then she mentions, eventually in the future, there will be a king called Indra Jumna, Maharaj Indra Jumna. He will establish a temple. Eventually we will leave this place, but we will disappear from this place, but there will be a king called Indra Jumna Maharaj. He will establish a temple and the deity and he will worship. So by hearing these pastimes from Jaimini Rishi, the, the sages were became sages became more curious. Now they want to understand who is this Indra Jumna. Now how what are the deities that are worshipped by Indra Jumna Maharaj? So then Jaimini, Jaimini Muni continues to narrate the pastimes of Indra Jumna Maharaj. So, um, Indra Jumna Maharaj was a great king, uh, very, very pious. He had everything, all the power, wealth, but he had all these things, opulences, but still he was very unhappy. He was not content. So, in one day, in, in his assembly, he inquires from everyone, is there any place where I can go and when, when I visit that place, I get satisfaction, complete satisfaction and where I can get, uh, where I can perform pure devotional service to the Lord. Then in the assembly, many people tell many things and one particular sage immediately says that I heard about one place called Burshottam Kshetra. It's called Nilachal Dham, um, where if you go, uh, you can get delivered, you can get moksha from there. You can, you can practice pure devotional service in this particular place, Burshottam Kshetra. Immediately he asks one of the uh, ministers, you know, can you please go and find out where exactly this place is? I want to visit that place immediately. So one of the minister's brother, his name is Vijapati, he sets out on a mission to find out where exactly this place is. So Vijapati goes out, after travelling through the jungles and forests and many many you know, days, finally he comes to this place and where um, he meets a person called Vishwavasu. Vishwavasu is a Sabra uh, caste, so they were the ones who were worshipping Nila Madhava for, for many many years. So he goes and meets them and inquires them about um, this particular deity, Nila Madhava deity. So there are two versions of the story from there. One version says that Vishwavasu was reluctant to give the information to Vidyapati because the legend, according to them, the legend says that in the future there will be a king who will come and take away the deity from them. He was worried about that aspect. That's why he did not want to give the information to Vijapati. Another legend from Skanda Purana says that Vishwavasu very happily um, invites Vijapati, gives him all the facilities and uh, honors him. And then the story goes like this even Vijapati gets attracted to Vishwavasu's daughter and he gets married to Vishwavasu's daughter. And finally Vishwavasu asks Vijapati, Why are you here? What can I do for you? Then Vijapati says, I am here to find the deity of Nila Madhava. Oh, then Vishwavas immediately happily says, I will take you, but on one condition. I will blindfold your eyes and I will take you so that you will not know the road to come back, uh, you know, to come back again or to take out the deity. So he blindfolds the eyes of Vijapati and they go and takes the, you know, they, they go to the uh, Nila Madhava deity. So that happens. After that, um, the information uh, was sent back to Indra Jumra Maharaj. So Indra Jumra Maharaj was a pure devotee. So immediately he wanted to set out on a mission to visit this place. So Indra Jumra Maharaj along with uh, Narada Muni and <clears throat> entire assembly of all the people, the Praja, they set out you know, to walk towards this place. So they walk towards this direction. After, uh, after reaching uh, one particular place, they reach something called Budkap, that is in, the, in, in Orissa. So they, play, they, go, they go to that place and they meet the king of Budkap at the time. And um, they were received by the king of Utkal and the king of Utkal asks King Indra Jumna, so how may I serve you? Why are you here? You enter with your entire kingdom. Then um, King Indra Jumna says that you know we are we are heading to see Purushottam Kshetra. We wanted to take darshan of uh, Nila Madhava. Then 
uh, King of Mutkala says that there was a huge sandstorm because of the huge sandstorm. We are we don't know whether Nila Madhava DD is still there or not. Just by hearing that King Indrajumna collapses right there, he faints in that place, and then Narayana wakes him up. You know, once he regains his consciousness, Narayana encourages King Indrajumna to continue his travel, go all the way up to Kurukshetra Mukshetra. Then they go to on the way they visit Bhuvaneshwar. Uh, they get the blessings of King Indrajumna, gets the blessings of Lord Shiva. Right, uh, Lord Shiva is the predominating deity in Bhuvaneshwar. He is also called Kshetra Palaka. So he is the protector of the dawn. Lord Shiva is the protector of the dawn. So then Lord, Lord Shiva tells King Indrajumna to build a temple for Lord Narasimha Dev in um, in Jagannath Puri or Purushottam Kshetra and also uh, perform thousand Ashwamedha Yajnas. That's what the instruction was given to King Indrajumna by Lord Shiva. So finally, they reach uh, Purushottam Kshetra. Then uh, uh, King Indrajumna builds a temple, a beautiful, huge temple for Lord Narasimha Dev. Then he started performing Ashwamedha Yajnas. So after 999 Ashwamedha Yajnas, performing, it, it's not very easy. By the way, performing Ashwamedha Yajnas is not very, very easy task. Very few rare devotees can perform, individuals can perform the Ashwamedha Yajnas. So after performing 999 Ashwamedha Yajnas, Lord Vishnu comes into his dream one night in Indrajimha. And he says that, and by then Narada Muni informs uh, King Indrajimha that Nila Madhava is no longer exists because of the stand, sandstorm. Nila Madhava BT is gone from that place. Then King, King Indrajimha laments and questions Narada Muni. If you already knew that Nila Madhava is no longer exists, you should have told me before, we would have come all the way here with the entire kingdom. Then um, Narada Muni says, don't worry, there is a purpose why you are here. You continue your uh, Ashwamedha Yajnas and everything will be revealed in course of time, due course of time. So after performing 999 uh, Ashwamedha Yajnas, Lord Vishnu comes into the dream of Indrajimna Maharaj. And he tells that there is going to be something wonderful that is going to happen very next day after performing the Ashwamedha Yajnas. So after performing the Ashwamedha Yajna, and the Vishnu says that yes, I am going to appear. So he gives a promise that he is going to appear. And uh, after performing the, as soon as King Indrajimna performed the thousand Ashwamedha Yajna, then immediately all the people, they come rushing towards the king and says, and they say that, O oh, king, um, there is some intoxicating fragrance coming from the ocean. So we immediately rushed towards the ocean and we saw something beautiful which we have never seen in our lives. So then they pulled in the King Indrajumna, they all went towards the ocean to see what was that. And they see a beautiful uh, log, it's a huge log, it's like a tree. So then it is mentioned, Narada Muni mentions that that beautiful tree, a big trunk, a log, is nothing but the hair of Lord Vishnu. <laughs> it's the hair of the Lord Vishnu. So based on the instructions given by Narada Muni, King Indrajumna takes that log, he brings it out. And Narada Muni says, now you have to make deities, carve the deities out of this log. So then who would do that? So then Vishwakarma, Vishwakarma comes into the picture in guise of a Brahmana or a carpenter. And he says, nobody is willing to do this actually, nobody is willing to carve these deities. Then Vishwakarma says, I can do this, but on one condition. So this entire thing is going to take 21 days. 21 days, you have to leave me secluded. Provide me a facility, room, nobody should watch me, nobody should question me, nobody should interrupt me. Put me in a room, I will finish the carving of the deities. So King Indrajimna says, okay, that's fine, that's fine. So then a huge room, all is provided for uh, Vishwakarma and the doors are closed. Vishwakarma started working on this wooden log and he, want, he started making the deities, right? And then 15 days passed by. King Indrajumna is very, very curious, eager to see the form of the deity. It is, it is a devotees. That's the that's the nature of the devotees too. You know, always think about Krishna and look for. Fifteen days, there was no sound. Absolutely, there was no sound from the room. Until then, there was the noise of the chisels coming up, you know, coming from the room. And King Indrajumna was very eager, anticipating to see the beautiful form of the deity. But then, at, uh, after fifteen days, there was no sound at all. There was no noise. Then King Indrajumna got concerned. You know, what exactly is happening? Is everything okay? 
Um, then out of curiosity, he and his wife, they both opened the door and went inside. And the person Vishwakarma was no longer there, he disappeared. And when he saw these three very unique, peculiar forms in the hall, without hands, without legs, the eyes are completely dilated, huge. And by seeing those forms, King Indrajuna really, he, he thought, he offended Vishwakarma, that's why he could not do this job. He felt really, really sad and so on. Um, he fainted right there. Because he thought he committed a huge offense to the deities. Then at the time, Nadamuni appears again on the scene and he tells King Indrajuna, so don't worry, that is a desire of Lord Vishnu. He wanted to appear in this beautiful, unique form and he narrates the story. Why? Uh, why the forms of Lord Vishnu in the form of Jagannath and Baladev Subhadramani were like that? Why did they want to appear in those forms? Right? So, he narrates the story. In the previous Kalpa, one Kalpa before, okay? One Kalpa before, when uh, Krishna was in, Krishna was in uh, Dwarka, when he performed in beautiful pastimes in uh, Madura and Vrindavan, after that he goes to Dwarka, and he kills, you know, in Madura he kills uh, Kamsa and then he goes to Dwarka, establishes Dwarka. And if you look at these three dams, Vrindavan Dam, Madura Dam and uh, Dwarka Dam. So Vrindavan is called Madhurya Dam. It's completely sweet past names of Krishna. Only sweetness. In Vrindavan, um, the devotees of Krishna are the Gopis and Gopas. They don't even consider Krishna as the Supreme Lord. They love him because he's Krishna, not because he's Supreme Lord. Right? And they consider, consider him to be equal to him. They consider him to be their uh, lover. They consider him to be their son. So that is the mood in Vrindavan. The sweetest pastimes were uh, uh, done by Lord Krishna in Vrindavan. That is called Madhurya Dham. And in uh, Madhura, it is mix of Madhurya and Aishwarya. There is some kind of a Madhurya Dham mixture of sweetness and Aishwarya Bhav. But whereas Dwaraka it is completely Aishwarya. Aishwarya means he, he, he showed complete opulences in Dwaraka. So even though Krishna was in Dwaraka, but he was always thinking about the sweet pastimes that happened in Vrindavan. Even at night, night times he used to, even in his dreams, uh, he used to think about all the pastimes that happened in Vrindavan. He used to call Sudama, Subha, uh, Radhe, Lalita, so he used to think about all these personalities in, in Vrindavan, even in night times. Even daytime, sometimes he used to get fainted by thinking about the uh, pastimes of all the gopis and devotion of the gopis in, in Dwarka. So they wanted to find out all the 60,000 queens, 60,100 60, queens. They wanted to find out what is so special about Vrindavan. Why Krishna, our dear Krishna is always talking about Vrindavan. What is special? And they inquired from Rohini, Mother Rohini. They wanted to hear the past tense of Lord Krishna and Vrindavan from Mother Rohini. Mother Rohini. So Mother Rohini says, yes, it's a, Vrindavan is a very, very special place. I can narrate all the past tense that happened in Vrindavan, but on one condition. If I, if Balaram, Krishna and Balaram hear these past tense when I'm narrating, they will go into ecstasy and we cannot control them. And they may go back to Vrindavan. So we have to make sure Krishna and Balaram do not listen to this pastimes while I am narrating. So then uh, Subhadra Devi says, okay, I will take that uh, responsibility. I will guard the door. We will close the doors. I will stand outside of the door so that nobody comes in, into the room and hear these pastimes. Right? So then everybody says, okay, that's a good arrangement. And all the 16,000 plus queens are with uh, Mother Rohini and Rohini Mother is started narrating the past times that were happening in, uh, that happened in Vrindavan. So everybody is very attentively uh, hearing the past times, very, very happy, you know, sweet past times of Vrindavan. Then Subhadra Mai, Subhadra Devi, you know, of curious, even she wanted to hear all the past times of uh, Krishna and Balram. So she puts her ear towards the door and she started hearing all the past times. And each past time, you know, right from the childhood, Mother Ishoda, how Mother Ishoda was taking care of Krishna, feeding the milk, how Krishna is very naughty and mischievous, asking for butter, stealing the butter pastimes, you know, uh, wrestling with, uh, with his friends. So one pastime after another, one pastime after another, after, while hearing these pastimes, Subhadra Devi goes into ecstasy. You now out of ecstasy, I, her eyes 
gets dilated. They become huge, very big. And her hands and the limbs shrunk into the body. So this is called Mahabhava Prakash. So uh, when, when somebody is in the deep ecstasy, which we cannot experience, right? So there are eight symptoms of ecstasy. You know, people roll on the ground, perspiration, uh, they cannot uh, speak properly, they laugh loudly. So there are eight symptoms of ecstasy. And this particular symptom is, you know, Mahabhava Prakash, it is called. So your eyes get dilated and the, the, all the lips of the uh, lips goes into the body, sinks into the body. That was the uh, experience Subhadra Devi was going through. And in the time, she did not observe when Krishna and Balram came there. So Krishna and Balram came there and looking at Subhadra, what is Subhadra is looking and hearing uh, very attentively. Then when they came and they understood, they hear the pastimes of their own that's happening in Vrindavan, you know, all the gopis and gopas, and they also go into this Mahabhava Prakash, Mahabhava mood. And immediately Krishna and Balram also, you know, their eyes get dilated and they become, you know, like the form that we see on the, on the altar, right? So, and, and immediately after a few, few moments, then they come out of the farm. But then what happens? Nadamani immediately appears on the scene. Immediately says, I saw this, I saw this. Immediately, you know, uh, uh, Krishna asks, what did you see? What is there to see? And he says, no, 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 I saw this farm. I saw this beautiful farm. Then uh, Nadamani requests Krishna and Balaram to give this darshan to each and every one on the material planet, on the earth. So then uh, Krishna gives his benediction. In the future, there is going to be uh, Indrajumna Maharaj. At that time, I will come in the same form. In the, uh, in the place called Purushottama Kshetra, I will give my darshan to everyone. So, and then you know, he tells the glorification of the uh, glories of the Purushottama Kshetra. So that's how um, Lord Jagannath uh, appeared in this material world. And then uh, King Indrajumna accepts this. And then he wanted to install the deities of Jagannath Baladev Subhadramaya, you know. And then um, he brings them to a Snana Bedi. Snana Bedi means where they shower the deities. But then they wanted to invite Lord Brahma to do the installation ceremony. So King Indra Jumna and Narada Muni, they go to Brahma Loka. Out of 14 planetary systems, Brahma Loka is the topmost. That's where Lord Brahma is residing. So Narada Muni wanted to go and invite Lord Brahma and then um, Indra Jumna Maharaj says, you know, I also accompany with you, I also come with you, is that okay? He says, yeah, that's fine, let's go. So they traversed all the planetary systems all the way to Brahma Loka. And when they reach there, the, the gods at Brahma Loka, they stop them. They said, you know, Lord Brahma is singing some hymns for Lord Vishnu, in glorification of Lord Vishnu. Just wait for a few moments. Then they said, that's okay, just a few moments. So after a few moments, they were allowed inside. They request Lord Brahma to come and install the deities. Then Lord Brahma gladly accepts, he is very, very happy. Yes, absolutely, I will come down and do it. But then Lord Brahma says, already a couple of movements passed. A couple of movements here on Brahma Loka is like many yugas passed in such a you know, <laughs> on the earth planet. So then by the time they reach back, Indra Jumna Maharaj reached back, there were already several generations of kingdoms, you know, changed. There are several kings, there are some new kings. They don't even recognize King Indra Jumna. When he talks about this deities thing, who are you? What are the deities you are talking about? Uh, you know, that was the mood. And then finally, you know, um, Narada Muni convinces the present king that they are the deities. Then uh, somehow they excavate the Lord Jagannath Baldev Subhadra Mai deities there. And there are so many intricate deities, I am not going into all the deities, right, details right now. Um, but uh, finally, uh, Lord Brahma himself comes and uh, installs the deities of Puri, Jagannath Baldev. Um, and then the first Rathyatra that happened from the bathing god is called Snarabedi to the current temple that happened at the time. So that was the first Rathyatra that was established during that time. So that is the appearance of uh, Lord Jagannath Balder Subhadramai. So very, very glorious, very special, very unique deities in the entire, entire creation. Right? Um, and uh, I wanted to uh, mention five aspects of Lord Jagannath, five special aspects. What is so special about Lord Jagannath, right? So what is the first one when we think about Jagannath? How did we come to know about Lord Jagannath, most of us? What is special about Lord Jagannath, which is very unique? Okay, first, okay, one is eyes, basically is form and eyes, number one. What is the second one? How many people came to know about Lord Jagannath? 
Ratha Yatra is very, very unique for Lord Jagannath. You don't see Ratha Yatra for any other deity, only for Jagannath. So, a lot of temples, a um, lot of temples, there is something called Utsava Vigra. Utsava Vigra is a small deity. All the worships are accepted by the small deity. And the Utsava Vigraha is the one which is taken out for procession, usually in some festivals, right, in some temples. But the speciality of Jagannath. The Jagannath himself, the main deity himself, comes out on a procession. Okay? Ratayatra is another aspect of um, Lord Jagannath. Okay. One is Ratayatra, the second one is his form, very, very unique, dilated eyes, you know, the, the hands, no hands, no legs. Right? So, what is the third one? Prasadam. Prasadam is very, very special. Jagannath Prasadam, there are so many. Hundreds and thousands of glories of Mahaprasadam. There are a lot of stories about Jagannath's Mahaprasadam. Okay, Prasadam third. Number four. What is that? Oh, the partners who serve. The oh, the, the, everybody gets opportunity to pull the rope of the. Uh, yeah, that can come under. There is the, the fourth aspect of uh, Jagannath is. The servants of Jagannath. You know who serves Lord Jagannath? There is a Sabras. Sabras are kind of considered as the low caste. So usually in temples, you know, Brahmanas, priests who are certain who have certain qualifications, they worship the deities. But Puri Jagannath, Jagannath uh, temple, uh, Puri temple, Jagannath was Jagannath is worshipped by a caste called Sabras, which are considered Shudras or low caste. You know, when when people are sick. The most intimate disciples or devotees go and serve their personality. But when Lord Jagannath gets sick after the Snana Yatra, who serves them? The Sabras. Only those are allowed to go to the close quarters of Jagannath and serve Jagannath during the time period. Nobody else is allowed during that time. Right? Shabari. Shabari is also from the same family. Yeah. Shabari is from the family of Shabras. Yeah, but basically they are hunters. Yeah, they are hunters, they are shudras, and um, the what it is considered. Yeah. And the fifth aspect of Lord Jagannath will come there. The fifth aspect of Lord Jagannath is the pastimes. So there are thousands of pastimes that we can hear from either from Puri or from Rajpur Jagannath. There is a book called Jagannath Mahatya, Mahatmya, you know, that is written by Pankajangi Prabhu. You know, he writes about how Rajapur Jagannath Baldev Sukhudramai were established, how they appeared there, and what are so many pastimes devotees share from that place. So if you if you talk to any devotee of Jagannath, you will hear some specific special pastime about Lord Jagannath. So these are the five special aspects of Lord Jagannath. Pratyatra, Prasadam, his farm, and the servants of the Lord, and the fifth one is the exemplary and sweet pastimes, very, very special pastimes of the um, Jagannath, Lord Jagannath. So if you take about, if you think about the um, Ratayatra, so Ratayatra, you know, if, if when a person is sick, when a person is sick, what happens? He goes to the doctor. But if a person is extremely sick, what happens? Then doctor comes home to see the patient. So that is the mood of Lord Jagannath. He comes out, even for the people who cannot come inside the temple, he comes out once a year to give his mercy, to give his darshan to each and every one. You know, without thinking about caste and creed, religion, doesn't matter whoever that person is, any living entity, God's mercy by Lord Jagannath when he comes out of the temple once a year during Ratha Yatra. So in, Ratha, in Puri, uh, foreigners are not allowed inside the temple. Okay. Foreigners are not allowed to take darshan of uh, deities in, uh, in Puri. So because why? It is because um, according to them, you know, there was a legend which says in the future some foreigners will come and take darshan. Because of their devotion, Lord Jagannath will go away with them. <laughs> So, out of fear, out of love for Lord Jagannath, they don't allow any foreigners to come into the temple. So, for them, Lord Jagannath says, since you are not allowed to come inside, I will come out for you, so that you can get my darshan. So, very, very special. Um, and uh, there was one uh, Iskand devotee, this happened, this is, it happened, you know, um, a real life example, in a story. There was one devotee, he is from Kashmir. You know, these Kashmir Pandits were very, very fair, like foreigners, so they look like Russians, mm -hmm. some of them, you know, mm -hmm. fair, fair complexion, tall. Mm -hmm. So then he wanted to visit, he was his devotee, um, but he wanted to visit Jagannath Puri. 
then he went with he went along with some of his friends, other brahmacharis and devotees, and then the pandas. They are called pandas who control the environment there, the temple. So the pandas stopped this devotee. You are a foreigner. You are not from this country, so you are not allowed to enter into the temple. Then this guy says, this, this devotee says, no, I am, I am Indian. I am from Kashmir. So I am a Brahmin. So allow me to take darshan. Then this person says, no, you are not a Brahmin. You are not even Indian. So I am not allow you inside the temple. Then he started speaking in Hindi just to establish that he is no Indian. Then he says, no, 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 we understand these days when foreigners speak Hindi. So <laughs> a lot of foreigners speak Hindi. So you must have Prabhupada, you know, <laughs> everything is spread across the world, you know, everywhere. So you, we know, you know even foreigners speak Hindi. So then uh, he, he doesn't know how to establish the fact that he is Indian. Then he started, you know, giving left and right, you know, uh, curses in Hindi. You know, all bad words and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the partner says, okay, okay, stop, stop. Now we understand, you are Indian, you are from the Hindi speaking person, so you are allowed to go. So that day he goes inside, takes darshan of the deities, and next day again he wanted to go. Then another partner, because they go in shifts, right? So the same person will not be there as a god in person every time. So next time this person goes again, and uh, the partner stops him. He says, no, you are partner, you, you are not Indian. Then they had a huge fight. You know the argument, but still the panda was very, very, you know, like strong. He says, "No, I am not going to allow. You are not, you are not an Indian. You are a foreigner." Then um, finally, he pushes him out of the temple, the you know main door. Um, this devotee is there standing on the street. All the pandas, you know, many pandas, uh, uh, circling uh, around him, and everybody is kind of scared. You know, are they going to beat him, or you know, what, what is going to happen now? Then uh, this one panda comes with a huge plate of prasad, jagannath prasad, and then gives him. Okay, now you eat this prasad. Then everybody is wondering, what is, how, what is, what is going on here? What is prasad to do with Indian or foreigner? You know, what can you do? And then uh, this person, you know, sits in a particular position and he does all the rituals, you know, before eating prasad, and then he takes honors the prasad properly. And, you know. Then after seeing this whole thing, the panda says, okay, you are Indian and you are pakka brahman. So you, the way you are eating, the way you are taking care of the prasad, honoring the prasad, it proves that you know you are, you are devoted and you are. Indian. So then he allows them. So the point is that uh, what I'm trying to mention is, you know, Lord Jagannath comes out to give darshan to each and every one. Even if some people are not allowed inside, but Jagannath comes out to give <coughs> darshan. So, and I will just take uh, one more pastime about Prasadam, and then we will end here. It's level, almost about 25. So Prasadam, what is so special about Prasadam? So there is a beautiful pastime about the speciality or the special, you know, um, Mercy of Prasadam of uh, Jagannath. So once Narada Muni performs a wonderful service to Lakshmi Devi in Vaikuntha, Lakshmi Devi gets very, very happy by the service of Narada Muni. You know, Narada Muni is a devotee, pure devotee of the Lord. He always you know, goes around chanting the holy names of the Lord on his veena, right? Uh, singing the glories of the Lord. So he performs a wonderful service. Lakshmi Devi gets very, very satisfied and asks Narada Muni, so what kind of uh, benediction do you want? Then Narada Muni immediately asks, I would like to have Prasadam of the Lord. <laughs> Can you give us Prasadam of the Lord? Then uh, immediately, you know, Lakshmi Devi changes her mood. Oh, you are asking for Prasadam? You should have told me two days ago. Just a couple of days ago, Vishnu, my husband said not to give this Prasadam to anyone. Now you are asking for this, I don't know what to do. Then Narada Muni says, uh, Mother, you promised me that you are going to fulfill any benediction. So now you have to do this. Then uh, Lakshmi Devi is in a fix, so she goes and, uh, you know, while serving lunch to Mahavishnu, then, uh, you know, she serves everything, but uh, Lord Vishnu understands her mood that uh, Lakshmi Devi is not very happy today. Then he asks, you know, my dear Lakshmi, what is going on? Why are you so unhappy today? I see something is bothering you. Then Lakshmi Devi says, um, the conversation that happened between her and uh, Narada Muni. So Narada Muni is asking for Prasad, your uh, remnants. And you said not to give, so what should I do? I don't know what to do now. So then uh, Vishnu says, yeah, this is a problem. You know, I told you not to give, but now he's asking, so what should I do? Then uh, Vishnu says, okay, we have a solution. So after finishing, after I finish eating, then uh, I will look in different direction. Just take without me seeing, you know, while you're taking this, I will not see you. That way I don't see you what you're doing, but you get the uh, remnants of my case. So like we didn't get okay. okay. That's good. <laughs> then after taking, the food, uh, Vishnu looks around other side and then immediately 
Akshmiri takes the plate and then he gives his Mahaprasad to Nardamuri. So as soon as Nardamuri takes the Prasad, then he goes into ecstasy. He started dancing, you know, chanting the holy name, singing, you know, dancing, and he's going around all the planetary systems. Uh, he's doing all these things. <laughs> then you know, he's going to every planet and singing the glories and chanting. You know, he's to totally in jubilation and ecstasy. Then he goes to Kailash. Then Kailash, so Lord Shiva says, Nardamuni. And he says, Nardamuni, I know you always chant the holy names. I have seen you ch chanting all, holy names all the time. But you seem to be extra happy today. You are in ecstasy. What is special today? What is going on? Then uh, Nardamuni says, yeah, I got this Mahaprasad of Vishnu. <laughs> So then um, Shiva, you know, Shiva being another Vaishnava, he feels extremely happy by hearing that Nardamuni gets Mahaprasad of Nardamuni uh, Vishnu. Then you know, he expresses his happiness and he says, okay, wonderful, you got it, I am very, very happy for you. Um, by the way, did you save anything for me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, the, when, when sannyasis Maharajas come to the temple to visit us, you know, devotees look for an opportunity to get some Mahaprasad, then that's of few devotees, right? Then, you know, the, very eagerly, devotees go and ask, you know, whoever is hosting that Maharaj, the sannyasi, immediately we go and ask, you know, is there any Mahaprasad? Or we tell them ahead of time, Maharaj is coming, we definitely need to have Mahaprasad, so just save something for us, right? If they don't save, then we feel really upset and afraid. <laughs> so, then Narada Muni said, oh, sorry, I did not. I like about you totally, you know. I mean, actually, I ate everything. I did not even think about you. Um, but then, you know, he started looking at his hands. I don't even know anything left at this point. Then, Lord Shiva sees a small particle mm. left on his finger. <laughs> so, very carefully, very, very carefully, because he doesn't even want, he doesn't want to lose that you know, small particle of prasadam from his hand. So, somehow he scratches and takes that small piece. And Lord Shiva, takes a very, very tiny bit of prasad. Then what happens? As soon as Lord Shiva takes a prasadam, he started dancing. And this particular dance, Lord Shiva does at the time of annihilation. Oh when he does this dance, everybody understands that this is time of annihilation. So he goes into ecstasy and started dancing. Lord Shiva started dancing. And all the three planetary systems, all the demigods, Gandharvas, Kinderas, everybody is wondering, why Lord Shiva is dancing at this time? And they are looking at their calendars and their time. This is not time for animation. What is going on? Is there something wrong with my watch? I watch. So maybe you have to update my you know, operating system. They are thinking like that. And then, um, then finally they came and Lashmi, uh, Parvati, his concert, come and ask Lord Shiva, Oh my Lord, what are you doing? Why are you dancing like this? This is not the time of inhalation. Then Lord Shiva says, oh, Parvati, I am very, very happy today. Nardamuni came and there was a small particle of prasad left and I honor that prasad. <laughs> and Parvati was happy, but then she says, I am your wife, you are supposed to share half of whatever you get. You save anything for me. Oh, then, you know, now you know, this is between husband and wife, you know how things go. So then, so doesn't know what to do. Now he is in a total anxiety. She says, you know, I, I'm not sorry, I did not say anything. There was very little left and I ate that. There is nothing. And then uh, Parvati really gets really angry and upset. And because, see, Parvati Devi is mother of the universe, right? She is Shakti. So because of the anger, the fire of anger was coming out of her body and eyes. The, all the three planetary systems were getting suffocated because of the heat. Completely getting suffocated. So now, you know, the, they understand, the demigods, everybody understands what is going on with mother Parvati. And they try to pacify her. He says, no, I did not get Prasad, so I can't do anything about this. I am really upset and angry. Then all the demigods, they, along with Brahma, they approach Mahavishnu. They say, no, you created this problem. <laughs> now you have to fix it. So Mother Parvati is very upset. Do something. You, you are the only one who can fix this problem. Then um, Mahavishnu comes to Parvati Devi and pacifies her. She don't worry. So I will give you prasad, my prasad to you. Then Parvati Devi says, no, I am not going to stop right here. Because there are so many millions of billions of living entities, they need your mercy. Not only me, everybody should get your Mahaprasad. So that is the nature of mother. Mother wants to feed all her children. So then uh, Lord Vishnu says, Tatasu. So be it. 
um, I will come as Purushottama in Jagannath Puri and you will be there as Bhimala Devi in the inner courtyard. Because Lord Shiva did not share prasadam with you, he will be straight away <laughs> in the courtyard somewhere. But you are going to be closer to me in the inner sanctum. So whatever is offered to Lord Jagannath, that will go to Bhimala Devi, which is Parvati. And then it becomes Mahaprasad and it gets distributed to everyone. So, so that is the glory of Mahaprasad. And it is mentioned that uh, the Mahaprasad is so special in Jagannath Puri. Even if one takes the prasad out of the dog's mouth, even if a Brahmana takes prasad out of the dog's mouth, still that is pure. They get liberated just by taking the prasad. That's the power of Mahaprasad in Puri. That's why, and there is no question of whether it's dry or it's old, there is a rotten, nothing. Prasad is prasad in Jagannath Puri. It has Mahatma. That's why devotees, when they go to Jagannath Puri, they get the dry rice, the rice which is offered to Jagannath, which is get, which gets dried. They bring that and throughout the year on Ekadasi, you know, the day after Ekadasi, they will, to break the fast, even if you take that one grain, you know, you get the complete benefit of the Mahaprasad. So that is the glory of Mahaprasad. Um, and the form, you know, the very, very unique form of uh, the Jagannath. You know, all the deities, wherever you see, the deities have eyelids. So that means they close and open. So at least for a few seconds, the Lord do not see us. But Jagannath is very, very merciful, 24 by 7. He doesn't even have eyelids. He is looking at everyone 24 by 7 and showering his mercy. Right? And any good, good, any good activity that you do, any small devotional service one does, Lord Jagannath is looking with his wide eyes, magnified. He magnifies your devotional service. He doesn't look at your parts, but he looks at your devotional attitude and any devotional service. And he is, his hands are like this. He is waiting for all of us to get embraced by him. <coughs> so he's waiting for, eagerly looking for all of us to come to him and uh, so that he can embrace all of us. And another speciality in Jagannath Puri is that, you know, the Pandas, they put hands on Jagannath, you know, they stand on him, they sleep on his belly. Like, they, they are like, you know, the deity is like their friend. They do everything and anything with Jagannath. Everybody gets opportunity to hug Jagannath in Jagannath Puri. You know, that is a special mercy that happens only in uh, um, Jagannath Puri. So, um, I will end one small pastime about Prasad and then, uh, yeah, I think that will, that will make, make you more happy, I am sure. So, this pastime happened in uh, Rajapur about Prasad. So, one devotee offered Jagannath Prasad to his friend. He is a Muslim. If, if, I, know, I don't know how many of you have gone to Jagannath Puri. I'm sorry, not Jagannath Puri, Mayapur. So, there is a place called Rajapur, it is in Simadapi. So there is a temple, a temple. So that that temple is surrounded by completely Muslims. Entire area is by Muslims, basically. Right. So anyway, so this particular devotee uh, gave some offered some prasad to this Muslim friend, Muslim. So then Muslim, you know, he does not understand the value of Jagannath prasad. So then he threw it. You know, he did not accept it because he does not understand anything about the prasad. He did not care for it. So, and you can understand that that person doesn't even come to the temple. He doesn't even take darshan of the deities. He doesn't even know how Jagannath Bandhu Subhadra looks. But you know, he was offered prasad and he did not, he just rejected it and threw the prasad on the street. So then what happened? So that happened and then next day, when this devotee went to the temple, Rajput temple, then to his surprise, he saw someone. Who was that? His Muslim friend was standing there with a coconut and some boga to offer to the Lord. Then this guy gets completely shocked. He never came to temple. He never come to, you know, uh, especially Jagannath Bhagavad Gita temple. And yesterday I gave you prasad, you threw it. And why are you here? And you are trying to worship the deity. What happened? Then this guy says, last night after throwing, uh, after throwing the prasad, I went. In my sleep, one personality came who was white and very strong, 50. And the person came and gave me a big slap on my head. And the chief, as you can see, my cheeks are completely swollen, completely red and swollen. Yeah. And his eyes, cheeks were really like that. Mm. I don't know which, who is the personality, but he was uh, he was very strong and hefty. And his eyes were you know, completely you know, round, big. He was white complexion. So he did that to me. And then um, there's another personality, looks like his sister. <laughs> and she was telling, kill him, kill him. <laughs> 
And she was, she was encouraging her brother to kill, kill me. She was telling me, kill him, kill him. So I don't know who that lady was. And then there was another personality, you know, who was black complexion, um, little taller. And he was telling, you know, it's okay, poor guy, leave him alone, it's okay. I don't know who those personalities are, this happened. Then uh, I understood that, you know, this is a temple, I come to a huge offense. So, um, then next day when he came, he wanted to offer a coconut and he wanted to offer other goga to, you know, Lord Jagannath Bhagavad So, so, I mean, it was a mercy, you know, then this devotee really felt, I mean, he thought, wow, it is really, you know, excellent that you got mercy of Jagannath Bhagavad Gita Sudhirma, you know. They don't appear just like that for anyone, but you, you, are, uh, you are so fortunate that they appeared in your dream and, you know, they slapped you also. <laughs> so, um, you know, for a devotee, for a lord, whether it's a slap or lap, whether he offers a slap or lap, it's a mercy, you know, they get the same benefit. So, that's the benefit that particular, that particular person got. So, that is the glory of uh, Jagannath Mahaprasad. Um, that's the glory of uh, lord Jagannath. So, with this, I will... Uh, yes. I have one personal story from a devotee. Yes, please, go ahead, yeah.